Hi guys and girls on YouTube. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Thorne 8000 series TV. Um, now it must be 35 or more years um, last time I repaired one of these for a customer. So I've just pulled this out of my archives. Um, I've had a bit of trouble finding the service manual for it. So uh, let's just take a look at it. Right, so um, it's taken me quite a while to find these service manuals um, because obviously you don't use things like this every day. Um, but I do pretty much have, um, if we scroll over, um, the whole series of Thorn service manuals. Uh, tallies that you've never seen for a long time, these. Um, and I've actually managed to find the service data for the Thorn 8000. Yeah, that's my old shop on there. So, um, <coughs> we've got the service manual, we've got plenty of technical bulletins. Um, let's get the back off and have a quick look what's wrong with it. Right, so I've got the back of the TV, I've had a look inside, um, the first thing I notice is, uh, if you have a look there, the thermist is missing. Um, now I do have these in stock, I'm not just sure where, I'm going to have to look for it. And if we move over to the diagram, uh, let's have a look on here, uh, it just says X701, there's no part number. Now, I think from memory, this is a V, VA1104, I think. Uh, anyway, I've got them somewhere. So, what I'll do is we'll uh, get the capacitor reformer out. Uh, we'll reform the main HT capacitor. Then we'll find a thermistor and switch it on and see what happens. Right guys, well I found a VA1104 uh, which is not an easy task um, because if you look at some of these drawers uh, they're not actually labelled what's on them so I've had to pull out quite a few different drawers to actually find them. Now what I've noticed when I've been looking I've got quite a few uh, of the thermal cutouts left still in stock. So let's try the VA1104 and uh, see what happens. Right, so that's the new thermistor in. I can't actually find uh, the rest of the old one. Um, I presume it's either dropped out at some time or it might have even dropped off when I took the back off. Uh, but I've had a look down there and I can't see it. So all we need to do now is turn on and see what happens. Right, now another thing I've just noticed, um, the on and off switch appears to be stuck. Um, probably the contacts are welded together. Um, I do have them in stock somewhere, but once again, it's going to take me ages to look. Um, but as it appears to be stuck in the on position, we'll just turn it on at the mains. You get your well, look at that. That's the result. Uh, the telly's on. Uh, that band you can see in the middle, that's just coming from the camera. That's not actually on the TV. Um, I don't really know why it does that. But uh, anyway, so it needs an on and off switch. Um, I can see the convergence is a mile out. The controls are all crackly. Uh, the tube's not the best I've ever seen. But there's still plenty of life in it. It's still well usable. So, um, yeah, what a result that is. Welcome to Doha, from every one of us. Right, well, I was hoping to show you the convergence um, on this um, colour bar generator I built from a kit in the uh, middle of the 1980s. Uh, but unfortunately, the tuner's packed up. So what we're going to have to do, I've got the tuner out, I'm going to have to give that a service before we go any further. Um, now, I'll just touch on one point here, this bar that moves up and down, a very common fault years ago. It used to be that gets dry jointed so every time you change channel the tuning position used to shift um, now I've got the same tool that I've had for over 40 years it's the Weller 8200D um, soldering gun um, 
I've had that for more than 40 years. It still works, but the on and off switch fault, it's stuck on. Um, and that's what we used to use to uh, resolder that connection on there, because obviously with it being a lot of steel, you need an awful lot of heat. So that's why you needed a 100 watt gun. But uh, anyway, let's get the tuner out, give that a service and uh, see if we can get the set back on. Right, well that's that's the tuner unit out. Now um, I've just flipped the lid off. Um, in case you're not familiar with these, these are very easily serviced by just desoldering this little piece here. It's like a finger. Um, and they get tar because they, I think they're silver plated, they tarnish with age. So you just desolder that, take it out, clean it, a little bit of lubricant, and put it back in. Right, soldering station set to 415 degrees. Um, so now we can actually take out the, um, the little fingers with just an ordinary soldering iron running at 415 degrees. Right, so that's the offending bit desoldered. All we've got to do now is just pull that out, um, give it a clean where it contacts the middle, and uh, solder it back in. There is, of course, one, one, two, three, four to do. So we'll do that with every one, and then we'll solder it back in and try it again. Right, so that's the tuner uh, repaired and serviced. As you can see, all the fingers have been soldered back in. Um, I've also soldered uh, that bar at the end. That will prevent tuning drift when you're changing channel. So uh, let's plug it in and try again. Right, okay, so I've got the tuner fixed. Um, if we look at the convergence now, you can see it's absolutely miles out. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. Uh, might do that in the part two because that's quite a big operation setting up the convergence on these um, But as you can see it's coming on um, It's not looking too bad the black bar going up is coming from the camera But I have noticed there is a little bit of a ripple on the verticals um, So it probably needs um, HD smoothing capacitor as well. So while you're at it We might as well um, take the top off of this and have a look in this as well Right, so that's me uh, Man of Supplies colour bar and cross hatch generator built from the kit in the 1980s. Um, I did actually modify it uh, when um, it was alright for older tellies, but when SCART came out on TVs, um, I, I needed to connect a SCART to it. So I've actually uh, modified it for a video output and uh, 12 volt for automatic SCART switching. Um, if we look on the back, it was uh, modified 18th of the 1st, 1998, and what I did is I built um, a little um, video output buffer there so I could take the video and um, feed it into a SCART socket. So yeah, very interesting that. Let's have a look inside. Um, you can see the bit I've added on there. Um, that's the RF modulator. That's the colour bar generator and that's the um, power supply. I can't remember why, but for some reason I built it in a separate case. Probably to uh, shield it, because I think when you bought this kit it didn't actually come with the mains power supply. Um, I think you were supposed to run it from batteries if I remember. Um, but I've never been a fan of using batteries for things. So yeah, okay, I'll stick the lid back on this and then we're back to the TV then. Right, so let's get back to the TV. Um, it's connected back to a skybox. I'll put a channel on, and then uh, while all the chassis are out and everything, um, I'll give you a good look inside. Right, so we're back on the skybox now. Um, the tuner's still out. I've actually pulled the chassis out, so I'll get to the tuner. Um, let's turn it round a bit while it's on. Um, I can see by looking at the uh, one of the reservoir capacitors there, there's a big bulge on it, so that's obviously needs changing, that's where the hum bar's coming from. But uh, let's take a good look around this, um, just in case you never see one again. So I'll move round nice and slowly, I've not done the on and off switch yet, but 
Um, you, I've got plenty of them in stock. You needed to take the tuner out anyway to get to the on and off switch. So that's the thorn tube. Sticker there that says buy British. Um, as you can see, the convergence is actually on the um, tube. Well, some of the convergence is on the tube base around the tube neck. Uh, let's go over to decoder. <laughs> Move nice and slowly up there. Joe Biden can change the current landscape during this time. I don't think he can change it because he can only do so much, but I definitely think that he's going to make an improvement for the better. That's the power supply and um, sound output stage in a very difficult place to get in the Thorn 8500. That was actually moved to the side of the chassis where it was easy to get hold of. Um, jelly pot line transformer down there and uh, you can't actually see it but the EHT rectifies around right at the back time based panel and that's the back of the time based panel I've no doubt there's a few dry joints on there I want doing But yeah, all in all, um, not a great deal wrong with it. The biggest thing is going to be setting up the convergence um, because quite often with these pots, um, they go noisy, they go very intermittent. You can set something up and then it changes again on its own. Um, I've probably still got some of them pots in if I can find them. But yeah, that's the Thor 8000 chassis. So there we go, guys and girls couple more jobs to do that's all set up the convergence change on and off switch put the tuner back um, take all the controls off and clean them don't just spray service hole in through the hole uh, change the uh, HD reservoir capacitor and uh, all in all that's not bad for a set of its age so um, yeah thanks for watching my channel and subscribe for more I've got um, Lots more vintage TVs in my archives. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.